hi guys um welcome back to this youtube channel where we do mainly um self edification um it's an honor to minister to you my name is michelle and um we're still on the narcissist spirit series praise king jesus or the assyrian spirit says and before we get started i'd like us to have the opening scripture First off, before we do the opening scripture, we um, one of the traits of a narcissist that we touched um, previously is that um, they get so jealous. So why a narcissist so jealous? That's what we're going to touch today. And um, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we shall be helped. Whether you are, um, I don't know if a narcissist can be helped. This is for the victims of that um, anyone that's been in an abusive relationship because of an overly jealous partner. Praise King Jesus. So, okay, let's do the opening scripture. Our opening scripture is in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 to 5. Praise King Jesus. Listen to this. Verse 1 of Exodus 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Verse 5. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation generations to those who hate me praise in jesus right opening prayer father i thank you for this day i thank you for the message you have prepared for us holy spirit come and use me to pass your message on properly minister to your people give me the tongue of the learned to speak a word in season for a person that's been badly affected by a bad relationship because of jealousy and Father, prepare the ears of whoever's going to listen to this message so that their hearts may be lifted, so that they may receive more life. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Right. So guys, we're here to talk about jealousy. Um, Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together except they agree? Now, there's this something about people when they meet for the first time with the intention of dating or whatever it is. There's something about the physical that hides the lot that is underneath. And for this reason, it's very hard to tell who a person is really on the inside. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of Jesus. It takes a lot of the Holy Spirit to get a full revelation of who a person is. Unfortunately, a lot of people walk around looking that they ha like they have it all together. And then months or even years of dating reveal a totally lost child inside of them, which gives the person that's dating them a lot of work. Like the relationship moves on from both parties receiving and it becomes one person becoming a caretaker of the other. And a lot of times, a victim of such people that have too much jealousy ends up being damaged in an, in an effort to please the person that's abusing them in the relationship, they end up looking like this person. And in the end, their future relationships are affected as well. So the reason why I'm here to talk about jealousy is because I want us to be helped, especially the females. I'm here to minister to the females. I know there's men out there that's been affected by jealous lovers, but it's most common in women, and that's why I'm addressing it to women, praise King Jesus. So we've been talking about the narcissist spirit for a while, and we established that a person that has this spirit is a person that has an excessive love for themselves, like too much admiration for oneself, that they end up putting themselves above everyone else, praise King Jesus. So when we look into uh, this subject of um, narcissism and jealousy, they too... The two can't depart from the other because a person with a narcissist spirit is always looking to be glorified, 
to be praised. A narcissist leaves off the supply of whoever they're dating. I think today we shall limit it to relationships because jealousy is mainly between people that suppose that they love each other. Praise King Jesus. So a person that has um, too much jealousy has they develops a feeling of resentment against another person because of their success, for example, or because of the advantage that they have. So jealousy is normally a result of suspicious fear. How can we break this down? Okay, how about this? A jealous person is a person that already has what they have. For example, in a relationship, this person or, or like already has a girlfriend, but they're so jealous because they fear to lose that person to another person. Praise King Jesus. There's, there's two words. I can't talk about jealousy and not talk about envy. An envious person, a person that has envy, has what they have, but they look at a person that has more than they have, and then they feel bad about it. Praise King Jesus. For example, I have a car, a Toyota, but because my friend drives a Mercedes, I get envious. Like I want more. I want what the other person has. And it's, it's not even because there's people that are ambitious or like, hard working like they wish to have more and they have good feelings about it that a person who has more than they have inspires them to work harder but then there's the plain envy the bitter envy of why does she have a mercedes and i'm riding a toyota praise king jesus so that is envy but i want us to capitalize on jealousy jealousy is i already have the guy but i feel bad every time the guy speaks to another person praise king jesus and Remember, we established that a narcissist person is um is pretty much insecurity. Because of an insecurity that these people have had from quite a young age, they tend to walk around in everything that they do, everything that they wish to acquire, is so that they can look bigger. Because for a narcissist, it's all about the image. It's about what they look like. When he goes out to find a partner, he will make sure that he gets somebody that amplifies them. When she goes out to get a partner, it's a case of how do I look with this person? And that is love because th that is collecting. The Bible says that to love is to give. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So ideally we should enter relationships with the mentality of giving. But because a narcissist or a person that too, has too much pride gets into a relationship with the mentality of collecting, it's very easy for them to get overly possessive and jealous. Praise King Jesus. So they get jealous because they have this fear that they don't, they don't, either they feel like they don't deserve that person or they just have this abnormal fear that this person will leave them for another. And because of this trait, it's, it knows no boundaries. Anyone and anything is capable of stealing this person off her. For example, if lady, this lady is very jealous, they'll accuse their partner of anyone and anything talking to uh, any random chick, looking anywhere, they, any way they look like triggers jealousy in them. It has no, these people have no standard. Like they will accuse you of sleeping with house help or with a Janet or with Cynthia. Anyone that talks to you for more than two minutes is a threat to them. Why? Because of the insecurity that they have in them. And there's no way that can be a healthy relationship. Normally jealousy is triggered by, um, neurotic insecurity you know that emotional insecurity like i'm not worthy i don't deserve them this person has a very low opinion of themselves that anyone is competition to them and if you're the victim of a jealous partner it it, it always leaves you baffled like does he really think i can sleep with that sort of person does he really think that i'm i can stoop that low and and this it's demonic. It's, 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 it's written here in um, the book of James that these feelings of envy and jealous, that is not wisdom from above. That is wisdom straight from the camp of the enemy. I'll just give us that scripture briefly. Because again, I have some girls that I know that will say, oh my God, he loves me. He's so jealous. He doesn't want me to talk to any male. No, no, no. That is not healthy. You're dealing with a very sick person that anything will trigger off this symptom. And in the end, you're the one that will suffer because there will be no love. Where there's no trust, there is no love. Listen to James, James um, chapter 3, verse um, 
13, listen, James 3, 13 to maybe 16, it says, For who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. Verse 15, this wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where there is envy and self-seeking, no, where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing is there. Praise King Jesus. But when a person is jealous, it's because they're self-seeking. When a person is jealous, they're not thinking about the partner, because again, I know someone that will be very troubled, like, oh, how can he think that of me? Listen, I'm here to help you. Relax yourself. The person that is jealous is dealing with an insecurity inside of them. A narcissist doesn't have a self voice that says to them, you are worthy, you are handsome. It doesn't matter how handsome he is. When he looks in the mirror, what he sees is not satisfying enough. So they need affirmation from other people. So if you have been the supply that's giving them affirmation and you start to give affirmation to everybody that walks past, it rattles their cage. It gets them out of that space where they feel like, oh my God, I'm hanging dry. They start to act like a fish that's fallen out of the water. Like I'm losing my breath. I am going to die because the thing that I know and love is being taken away from me. And it doesn't matter if you're speaking to somebody that looks like the back of a bus. They'll be disturbed. Praise King Jesus. Narcissists have a tendency to look, they come across, when you first, when you first meet them, they come across as very self-confident, arrogant even. Like they look like they've got it all together, but underneath they're masking a deep sense of low self-esteem. So when he starts to date you, you become his esteem. You become his crown. If it's a female, basically every time he walks into a wedding or to a party or wherever, you're literally like a handbag. Oh, look what I've got. I am so great. Look at this. I mean, there's incidents where some guys in a group are even to, okay to sleep with the same chick. Like the chick shows up with a guy and then weeks later, another guy hits on the same chick. And this is so twisted, but it, it gives them a sense of, oh, if I can sleep with her because um, my friend so-and-so slept with her last week, that makes me as great as him. Do you understand where I'm coming from? That's why I said to you, it is demonic. It, it is earthly wisdom. It is not wisdom from above, praise King Jesus. So, all of this um, insecurity is bound to trigger jealousy. And um, the triggers of jealousy are self-entitlement, like we have said, and self-esteem. How is um, self-entitlement? Yo, you are my girlfriend. You are my wife or you are my partner. You are my husband. You are my this. Remember, a narcissist's main disease is my. Like too much self. My, my, my. You are mine. You have no business greeting the neighbors. In these people's mind, the scripture that says, love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul, then love your neighbor does not apply. Every time you do an act of kindness to the neighbors, it affects this person. So the sad bit about it is this person sees themselves as a God in your life. They see themselves as a, as a, you should worship only them. And that's why I gave us the opening scripture, or not I, <laughs> the Holy Spirit, Exodus 20. Of, let me read it again for you. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1, it says, And the Lord spoke these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So this person sees himself as your God, your owner. The word Lord means owner. I am your owner. You must not love any other person but me. You must not smile at any other person by, but me. And these people are very, very assumptions. They assume a lot. One tiny thing triggers a sense of insecurity in them. Then they start to accuse you and accuse you and accuse you and accuse you. That is the beginning of the death of a relationship. Where these accusations, that's not heavenly. Praise King Jesus. The whole of the New Testament has two parties. Jesus and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the priests and the religious leaders. All they ever did was accuse Jesus. And then Jesus says to us at some point in Revelation, he says, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, because the accuser of the, the brethren, Satan, has been dropped down, praising Jesus. 
So anyone that in a relationship that all they do is accuse and accuse and accuse, that is not godly. That means they're mentally not okay. That's demons. Praise King Jesus. Good is love. So your partner should be okay with you loving your neighbors. Why? Because of the confidence that they have in you. So again, it goes back to a case of this person is convinced that you don't believe in them. Why? Because they don't believe in themselves. A person that does not believe in themselves finds it difficult to tell their mindset that another person believes in them. And again, all of this mess starts from a person not knowing God. Praise King Jesus. So we've established that a narcissist is very, very possessive and very, very jealous. But look, the only way for you to deal with a jealous partner is to deal with yourself. Because to deal with yourself is basically to build yourself up. You cannot pay attention to another person because you don't know how their life will turn out. When I was starting off, I said to you that at this YouTube channel, we look out for self. I love a scripture here. It's in the book of John or is it first John? It says, but you are of God. But the rest of the world or the whole world is under the sway of the wicked one. So it's always important for you to walk around with the mentality of, I can defend my actions, but I can't defend another person. So first John chapter five, verse 19 says, we know that we are of God. But the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. In this whole business, including dating, you always have to have to leave room for the other party. You need to polish yourself. You can't change a human being. Only God can change a person. So it's best for you to perfect yourself in the image of God because you need to have the mentality of I am of, of God. The whole world is under the sway of the wicked one. We are not accusing the whole world. It's just the mindset we've given to ourselves to leave room for the other person to error. That's why scripture says, and the people ask Jesus, how many times should we forgive? And then he said, whoa, 77 times seven, do the math. Like walk around with the mindset of I am of God. Everyone else needs Jesus. And on that note, I forgive everyone that's going to wrong me today, tomorrow and the day after. So when you're dating this jealous person and because of that sense of entitlement, because they see themselves as a God in your life, you can't change them. You're dealing with a deep seated issue that this person has had since they were a kid. Either they had mommy issues or daddy issues. Their relationship issues started from way back. But we thank God that we have um, Jesus. He says that whatever my heavenly father has not planted must be rooted out. So yes, go ahead and pray for your partner, but perfect yourself. Perfect yourself. Because again, scripture says in First Peter somewhere that if you are married to a non-believer or associating with a person that does not believe, walk the talk so that your behavior may minister to this person and then they'll turn to God. So I like us to look at ourselves and how we can perfect ourselves so we don't get damaged by the other person's insecurities. Because I'll tell you for free, once this person has succeeded in making you believe or think like they do, it's very, very, very difficult for you to have a productive relationship in future unless God steps in. All of the damage that they do to you affects your future relationship. Because they, and the way a narcissist works, I'm sure you've seen the previous, the, the previous episodes when I'm my youtube channel they have this mindset they believe they're always right it is their way or the highway so when they come in with this sick mentality of everyone is the cheat because of maybe past relationships or daddy used to cheat on mommy or whatever they try to put it in your head that so that you can think like them as well praise king remember two cannot work together except they agree so a narcissist will wash out your mentality and put their mentality in you if you don't have jesus and then you'll be damaged, and then you'll go and damage other people, and then the whole world is messed up. And the reason why I like to talk to women, because God has put us in place to nurture our children. Every twisted man or woman is a result of a twisted family. If we stand in our position as women, and we perfect ourselves in the image of God, we, we, we are bound to bring up God-fearing children. We are raising future husbands, we are raising future wives. If our mind is at peace and in God, so will our children. And then the person who encounters them in future can have a blast. A lot of women have not seen happiness in a marriage because they're trying to play mommy for some man who their mother did not play mommy. 
a lot of men are struggling with very pretty chicks but super broken because somebody didn't play the role of parent in this girl's life. So before you even graduate to being their partner, wife or husband or whatever it is, you have to fast to first fix the baby, the insecure baby in them so they can grow into human beings that are lovable. And then it becomes so tedious because you spend, imagine you meet a chick at the tender age of 30 and you have to mother her or father her for a whopping 20 years. When will you start to have some serious romance? Because you're trying to get the minds to align. Praise King Jesus. So listen to this. Fix up. Fix yourself. You've noticed these traits in this person that you're dating, but chances are they're, probably, they're, not, they're not your last partner. So you have every business to fix yourself up for your future or fix up so they can change and look like you if they have the ability to change. For me, I don't vouch for other people. We are of God. John chapter 1 verse 5 verse 19. The whole world is under the sway of the wicked. I'll give people the benefit of the doubt, but I won't break my back. I will perfect myself so that hopefully they can jump onto the God wagon. And the only way for me to perfect myself is back in the image of the one who created me according to John 1 26. If you can't change a person, you can't change them. Because again, they're suffering from low esteem. A person who is jealous is pretty much saying, I am not confident in who I am. I feel like you could leave me any second. And here's what, what's up. Eh? Remember, a narcissist, likes to have to, a narcissist likes to have to control. They like to control the people they're dating. And every time you get an inkling of who they are, when you see that they, 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 they're not right in the mind and they, they catch wind of it, if they sense that you have busted them in who they are, they, they start to feel very jealous because they start to feel threatened and they know that you could leave them for somebody who they think is more worthy. That's where all the drama begins. Their low self-esteem leads them in an, into an overreacting mode. Because, guys, there's a very, very thin line between the front that a narcissist puts on and the actual person, the timid little child that they are on the inside. The minute a narcissist gets exposed, the minute they realize that you've gotten on to them, you start to be relevant in their lives because you can't feed that supply. When you stop to worship them, when you stop to see them for who they really are, they start to get really, really agitated. When the accusations begin, there's no turning back. And then they'll get overly jealous and you can quite easily mistake it for love, thinking that they love you too much. But in reality, it's just a case of, no, you're simply mine. No one can have you. Why? Because I want you for myself. I love you because I, 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 I. It's never a case of I love you because you are A, B, C, D, this, this, this that, and the other. Praise King Jesus. The lack of control triggers hate. Because again, a relationship with a narcissist is in stages. In the early stages, they adore you. They love, bomb you. They buy you gifts. They call you all of these lovely names because of what they're feeding off you. Praise King Jesus. Everything is for their image. Everything is for them, 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 them. When you later realize who they really are and you start to pull out, that's when the hate begins. But guess what? It's always been there. Because this person, a proud person, only loves themselves. They don't know that scripture of love your neighbor. It's them, 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 them. And there's a thin line over there. There's a very thin line between them and God as far as they stand. That's why if you're dating this sort of person and you're born again, they'll never understand your relationship with God. For them, God will be like the next dude, praise King Jesus. When you say to them, oh, I can't meet up with you because I have, for example, to go and minister at church, they look at it in a funny way. Like they can't stand for you to be, to have another person in your heart other than themselves. And that's where the trouble begins. Because the scripture that the Lord has given us, I need you to come back to God. If you are with this sort of person in a relationship, I need you to align yourself because I want us to talk solutions. Exodus chapter 20 is the Ten Commandments that the Lord our God gave to Moses at Mount Sinai. The reason why God gave the commandments to Moses at Mount Sinai is because the children of Israel were misbehaving. They were used to worshipping other gods in Egypt. So they've left Egypt and now they're in the desert and God is thinking, I need to align you guys. You're so messed up. You didn't have values before. You didn't have a culture before. You didn't have belief. So we shall start with this law. 
the Ten Commandments. And what's the very first one? The Lord spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God. So listen, sweetheart, you only have one Lord. You only have one God. Who is that? God. You only have one Lord. Who is your Lord? God. What does the term Lord mean? The term Lord means anyone that has authority over you. We've seen that term being used um, here on earth, like, um, for example, a person that has rights to property or a house is referred to as a landlord because they own that property. So the word Lord means owner. All of us here on earth are owned by God, the living God, capital G. Anyone that comes into your life and is jealous of your God is sick and they need prayers. Only the Lord is allowed to own us. And the beauty of God owning us is he perfects us. Every time we go into the scriptures, we read about how to be sensible people. The entire Bible from the beginning to the end is teaching us how to depend on God. And who is God? God is love, according to the books of 1st and 2nd John and 3rd. God is love. How does a person know that you have God when you have love inside of you? What's love? Love for the neighbor. But what is Mr. Narcissus saying? Why are you loving the neighbors? Why are you always smiling at everyone? Like, what's the matter with you? Like, you're supposed to only look at me. I mean, they fall very short of saying that statement out loud. You should be looking at only me, praise King Jesus. And God is saying, love me. And there's no way you can love and understand God and fail to love your neighbors. Because everything is teaching us is so we can get along with one another. Praise King Jesus. Remember the disciples asked Jesus in the book of Matthew. They said to him, Daddy, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus says to them, Yo, love the Lord. Your God. I think it's Matthew 24. Let's run there very, very quickly. No, Matthew 15. Let's look at Matthew 15. What's the greatest command? Love the Lord God with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your soul. Listen to this. I need to find the book of Matthew real quick. And I think we shall find it in Matthew 14. I am trying to help you on how to deal with a person that wants your attention at no cost to the extent of alienating you because you said hello to the neighbors. That is sick. That is sick. And you need to help yourself. Praise King Jesus. Matthew 15. Mm -hmm. Forgive me. We need Matthew 22. There we are. Matthew chapter 22. We'll start from verse 34. Uh uh, 36 will do. Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. 36. It says, Teacher, <coughs> which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. Verse 39. And the second is like it You shall love your neighbor. As you love yourself. On these two commandments hung all the law and the prophets. Praise King Jesus. So, a very jealous person is operating according to the law. What is the law? I am your wife. You got married to me. You brought sacks of rice to my father's house. My entire family saw you. And on that note, I don't understand why I saw I, I checked your phone. And I saw you calling somebody darling. I am your only darling because we were joined in matrimony at this church. And you even have the metals to show for it on your finger. Now that is the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law. How? Jesus came to bring love. That when there is love in the picture, the law has no position. The law hangs on love. He's saying to us, love me, the Lord. After that, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Here's what's up. You can't love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. And that pretty much narrows down the personality of a narcissist or that spirit. Because of the inability to love themselves, they don't understand why you love your neighbor. 
Because for them, they don't love themselves, they don't love you, and they don't love the neighbors. All they love is themselves. They love you because of what you can bring to the table for them. So when you start to say hello to people at church, you know, when you walk out of church and you want to say hello to everybody, they, they find it really disturbing. Like, why are you talking to everybody? Why do you want to give the neighbors a lift? Why are you giving out all of these things that we have in the house? And you're thinking, yo, but Jesus said that if we don't, if we feed the hungry, we are feeding Jesus. If we visit the sick, we're visiting Jesus. If we give anybody that needs a lift, a lift, we're helping Jesus. So that's why God pushes us to know him. That's why God needs to be our Lord. Oh, God, help me. Listen, you need to get out of that abusive relationship. How are you going to get out of it? Get out of it mentally. Protect yourself and your heart. Scripture says, guard your heart well, because that's where all the springs of life come from. How? Align your heart with the word of God. Align your mindset with the word of God. This person that you're giving all of your attention to is not okay. They're not operating according to the word. They're under the sway of something else. You need God. You need to come back to God. You need to come to the right owner so he can teach you to love yourself. Because again, this this, these sorts of relationships have a tendency to leave us in the gutters where we don't feel confident enough. You know, this person, a narcissist, can quite make you feel so insecure about yourself. No one can love you. I helped you to get you out of your father's house. You see, I told you they like to behave like God. Eh? I got you out of the land of Egypt. No one can love you. Nobody, look at you. I did you a favor to marry you. Nobody can. You people, these guys can abuse you mentally. So you need to come back to God so he can tell you that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And you need to come back to God so he can drum it into your head that he created you in his own image. And for that reason, you are beautiful. I like what he says to us in Psalm 139. Psalm 139 or is it 136? Ah, Psalm 139, verse 14, what does it say? I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Listen, if your soul does not know who you are, let me tell you, you used to be the hot chick at school. You used to be the hot chick in the neighborhood, and everybody thought you were older than a slice of toast. But ever since you encountered this brother, They've raised so much negativity into you and telling you all these things. But when you look at a mirror, you see the back of a bus. Listen, come back to God. And he's saying to you, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are the works of the Lord that created you. Let me tell you, it took Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit to create you. Praise King Jesus. God picked up dust, molded you for some time, especially if you're a chick. God made Adam out of dust. But you, a chick, you were delicately made. One rib out of Adam. And there you were, molded, beautiful. You need to come back to God. You need to come back to the word of God to understand who you are. Because now again, all of this, when you understand all of this that's in the Bible, you get what we call a continence. When the Lord blesses you after you've understood him, he lifts up his continence upon you. And everybody that looks at you, says that you're beautiful. Why? Because your spirit is exhibiting beauty. Your understanding is one of a confident person that knows who they are in Christ. Don't allow a jealous person to take you down the drain with them, praise King Jesus, because it is not godly. He has told us, I'm the Lord your God who got you out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God who gets your mentality out of that relationship. And when I tell you to leave it, you don't necessarily have to walk out of it because you're probably bound by the law. And the only thing that you have to do is to find Jesus. And when you find Jesus, your heart, it is your heart that gets out of that, um, th that sorrow, that pit. It is your mindset that moves to Jesus, praise King Jesus. You know, the children of Israel are so amazing. When they left Egypt, it was a big deal. They were in such a hurry to leave Egypt because the Lord was gracious. And to them, he sent Moses to pick them up. So after Moses picks them up, they're in the desert. Moses has to go and chill with God for 40 days and 40 nights. So God can give him the instructions on how to govern these people. Now, these guys waited for some time. And then when they saw Moses was not coming back, they decided to start worshipping a mini God. They went to Aaron and said to him, listen, 
It's boy Moses who got us out of Egypt. We can't see him. He's gone walk about. We need to worship. What do we do? Aaron says, okay, all fair. Bring your earrings. Bring all of your gold earrings. They brought their earrings and then they made a, a calf, a golden calf. And then they started to worship it. Why? These people's bodies left Egypt, but their hearts did not. Yeah? So when, <clears throat> why am I bringing this out? Mentally. You need to get away from what that person, that twisted person has put in your head and you align yourself with the word of God so that you can have peace, even if it's in the midst of an unclear situation. Praise God. So listen to this. Yeah. Exodus, no, no, Acts chapter 7, verse. We can start from 37, but I want us to pay special attention to verse 40, right? Or verse 39. Listen. This is that Moses who said to the children of Israel, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. He you shall hear. This is he who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai, the angel being the Lord, and with our fathers. The one who received the living oracles to give to us, which is the commandments, whom our fathers did not obey but rejected. And in their hearts, they turned back to Egypt. Sweetheart, I'm talking heart business. Remove your heart from that person who, because of too much jealousy, they've been drowning you. And align your heart with God. And you can do this while you're still in the same house as them, praise King Jesus. Align yourself to God. Because if you're the angel that the Lord has sent to deliver this person from their twisted mind, it will happen. If indeed they're headed for destruction, there's a future for you. There's a way forward, praise King Jesus. So it's super important for you to stay in the word of God because the Lord, the Lord your God is the only God that will get you out of that pit of Egypt. Praise King Jesus. I'm the Lord your God who got you out of Egypt. I'll read that scripture again. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. So if this person has been making themselves a God in your life, turn to the living God. Because that is bondage. To serve other gods is bondage. That is why you get agitated every time this person acts like, you know, that, that too much jealousy that suffocates. So you need to turn your heart and your mind and your soul to God. And then he can give you the grace and the patience to deal with this person. Praise King Jesus. Or he can polish you for better relationships. Better still, we've established, if you're damaged as a mom, the kids will be damaged. Any kids who are with a child who is in um, an, an abusive, who, who watches an abusive relationship between mom and dad, that is what they'll take to their marriages as well. That is what they'll take to school as well. A kid who's devoid of love cannot love other people. And then people will be affected from generation to generation to generation. Praise King Jesus. So it is important. It is key for us to serve one God, the Lord. You know, I like to talk solutions. And... um. This is all I can think of. We've pretty much touched everything about this narcissist spirit, but I need you. And you see, guys, when we talk jealousy, it's also important to remember these people will not only get jealous of a person that's in your life, they can be jealous of a job. For them, they're thinking to themselves, you're spending too, too much time at work. Let me tell you a short story before I close. So here's what's up, right? What triggers jealousy in a person is anything that takes attention away from that person that gets um, the, in anything that takes attention away from them. Whatever triggers jealousy in a partner is them sensing that the attention that they feel they should be having is being given to another. And this is not limited. Like it can be, a person can be jealous of one's job. A person can be jealous of one's friends, one's relatives, one's belief, praise King Jesus. And I like to say to people, before you get into a relationship, before you get into a marriage, it's important that you pursue God. Because it, it will be really, really nice if God is what takes your primary attention, right? Anyone that goes into a relationship without a hobby or a belief becomes a burden unto the other. Um, uh, um, take this example. I went, um, I was at hospital earlier because my dad's not well, he's in intensive care. And uh, when we got there, I got speaking to the doctor, because, I mean, dad is, he's got tubes all over. 
So I, I got talking to the doctor. Very good, uh, very good guy. He really, really ministered to me. So, you know, I was saying to him, oh, thank you for the good job that you're doing. And then this gentleman, uh, so he, he, he was explaining to me about all of these machines. Because I've never been to intensive care. But this hospital is so cool. It, 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 it gives a facility where the, the relatives, the family can come into the room so you can see what's going on. Which I think is also good because you don't want a patient who is locked away and all you get is updates. And, and, you know, the person's brain needs to hear familiar voices so it can come back to life, that sort of thing. So I asked the doctor about all of these tubes and all of these machines and all of those sounds. And he said to me, that is life support. And um, basically, he said to me that what us the doctors do is support a person's body so the body can heal itself, praise King Jesus. And that really ministered to me because I thought to myself, okay, God, now I really know why you made sure I passed by this hospital before I go to talk about jealousy. Because the next question I asked him was, who supports your life? The answer I wanted from him was Jesus. But what he gave me was even more revealing. He said to me, my wife is my life support. And then my kids can follow. And then he, he said to me, my wife is very supportive of my job. And because she is very supportive of my job, I can come here and do the work that I'm supposed to do with all of my heart because I have all of the support, praise King Jesus. So picture a scenario where the wife was so jealous of, oh, why are you always on that job? What about us and the kids? Oh my God, you must like some nurses in that place. And here's what's funny about jealous people. Because they're so self-consumed, they never seek to learn what it is that you're interested in so that they can come and you do it together. They stand in their corner and they start to defend their game with the hope that you will go and join their corner. So they don't seek to know what is keeping you busy. So they can't help you and they can't help themselves. And for that reason, they're so heavy on the person that um, they, they claim to have so much love for. I tell you, that's not love. Praise King Jesus. So this gentleman, the wife is very understanding. The wife is very supportive. The wife... I don't know how often this guy goes home, but he said to me, he's the main doctor, very humble guy. He told, when, when I overthanked him for the job he's doing, he said, no, but it's not really me because even these nurses do most of the work. I only come in, come in to monitor and give instructions. So he first he gives the credit to his wife, then he gives the credit to the nurses. Now that is somebody you want to get into a relationship with because he's not so full of self. But let's go back to the wife. The wife is not selfish because she knows that the husband has been anointed to take care of other people's lives. So she supports. I even do, I, I know powerful, a powerful woman of God here in Uganda. Whenever she wants to celebrate her husband's birthday, she goes to the pulpit with the flowers and the cake. Because she knows that the man's passion is with the people of God. Because her husband loves God and the neighbors, she knows to fall into the picture and support. So a person who's jealous of the other people's calling or job, they stand on the side and they start to throw stones. They don't support. Why? Because they have that illness of looking out for only themselves. They can't come and join in to support for the glory of God. It's always for the kingdom. And this is because of a lack of loving the neighbors. I hope you get the concept. Love the Lord your God enough for you to pursue your calling. When you're done, love the neighbor. Because again, the calling is about supporting the neighbors. Because Jesus says, the only way that I know that you love me is when you feed my children. Conversation between Simon Peter and John. Sorry, and um, Jesus, when Jesus is about to check out. He asks um, Simon Peter, Simon Peter, do you love me? Simon says, yes, I love you. Well, then feed my sheep. What is to feed? To give. To look out. To help. To serve. Jesus asks a second time. Simon Peter, do you love me? Oh, yes, master, I do love you. Jesus said, feed the lambs. The sheep, the lambs. And then Jesus asked the third time and Peter's beginning to get agitated. But Jesus has to stress it. If a person does not enable you to love your neighbors, to love your friends, to love God's people, he is twisted. Because it is not of God. Jealousy is not of God. Jealousy is what drove Satan out of heaven. He was jealous of God. He started to see himself as the one that should be exalted. So, if you feel like you have this trait in you, help yourself. Come to the word of God. My Bible tells me that the word of God is a double-edged sword that separates spirit from soul. If your body 
if you can sense, if you know, if your friends have told you that you have this problem, call upon the spirit of the living God via the word of God to separate that spirit from your soul, from your intellect, from your understanding. So that you can be aligned back to God and you can be a pleasure to be around. Because a jealous person is not a pleasure to be around. Jealous partners is the reason why men sit in bars until 4 a.m. Because when they think of where they're going home to, it is World War Seven. Jealous partners is the reason why some people are so suffocated that they can't even actualize or do their own jobs well. Praise King Jesus. Jealous partners is the reason why kids in a family are suffering. So even if you don't want to change for yourself because you're so full of self, think about the kids that you're raising. Think about the second, the third, and the fourth generation. Don't allow to be the reason God is chopping your generation off and starting with a new one. Remember when God, the, the story I just told you about of Moses when he's leaving Mount Sinai, and, and <laughs> God said to Moses, yo, ch check those people out down there on earth. They've made themselves um, a carved image. Those are your people. Go and sort them out. The minute God noticed that the child of Israel had turned back to Egypt in her heart and she's making this carved image, God detached from the child of Israel and said to Moses, your people are misbehaving because God can't deal with people that serve other gods. If a man or a woman has put you in a position to serve them, they're derailing you away from God. We even have men who stop women from going to church. We have women who stop men from going to church. That is demonic. Align yourself back into God's position. And God says to Moses, you know what? I can't deal with those people. I'm going to wipe them out and I'll start with you. You can be the first generation of people that love me and know me and walk according to my ways. And it took, it took Moses to intercede for God to change his mind. But why am I sharing this story? Do not be the reason that you're the last generation before God can start a new generation that understands him. Because our Lord God is a jealous God visiting the iniquity. And listen, idolatry is not necessarily going to a shrine to worship um, gods from, I don't know, your village or your ancestors. Idolatry is anything that takes your mind away from the mind of God. So if a human being in your life is pushing you to take your mind away from God, that's an idol. Feel comfortable seeking God because your finding God is what will help them or your finding God is what will help you to be a better mom or a better dad, to raise a generation. I have a series on here. It's called The Elect Lady. I started with The Elect Lady series before I did The Narcissist Spirit. Why? It takes a narcissist to raise an elect lady. Human beings, we're weird. We don't work well in a comfort zone. It takes a person putting you into a tight spot for you to turn your attention to God. Because whatever situation you're going through right now, your mom can't help you, your sisters can't help you, only God can help you. Because that person has built a suffocation house around you. So I'm begging you, turn to God. The umbrella scripture for this narcissist spirit is in Isaiah chapter 10. And this is exactly what prophet Isaiah prophesied at the time. He said, by the time you're done with the narcissist, your heart will be aligned back to God. You will not fear him anymore, but you'll fear God because you will know that it is God that helped you in that situation and nobody else. Listen to Isaiah chapter 10 verse 20. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as have escaped of the house of Jacob will never again depend on him who defeated him or who tortured him, but will depend on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth, I'd like to break this baby down for us. The remnant. What is the remnant? The people that are left. Israel. I like the story of Jacob. He started off as Jacob, but God had to take him through some narcissist series to purge him into Israel. Basically, Israel is the transformed Jacob, praise King Jesus. So the remnant, the good person, the better person that you have become after losing all of yourself, all of your carnal self and operating in the, in the spiritual, this sort of person will never again depend on carnal people, depend on the reaction, because jealous people are always there. People that treat us in a way that we don't want will always be there. Our work is for us to perfect our image in God so we're not bothered by what they do. We actually get into a position of interceding for them. We should not be feeling anything because we are totally dependent on the God, the Lord, the Holy One of Israel who delivered us. And how did he do it? In truth. What is the truth? The gospel of Jesus on the cross. The word of God is true. 
John 6, 63, the word that I speak, not is it John? No, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. First thing, Jesus. So we need to rely on God in truth. This truth, Christ crucified. First thing, Jesus. The Christ that will take away this situation without you paying a cent for it. Because he's all powerful. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I can't go any further. This is enough for now. Jealousy is not cool. The Lord will help us. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, if you have not given your life to Christ, I don't know how this can help you. I can only advise you from what I know. It is Jesus that helps us in these situations. So if you need to give your life to Christ, please you put your hand on your heart and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this message. I thank you for the words that I have had. And I thank you because you're here to deliver me from the bondage of a person that has been a Lord in my life. Today, Lord, I take you into my life. Jesus, I declare you as my Lord, my owner, my savior. Remove my names from the book of death, from the book of destruction, and write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, let's pray. Okay. Father, we thank you so much for this message. I want to bring all of the women out there that are, that are in abusive relationships and men, King of Glory. And uh, we thank you because the Bible says that you, fought, you send forth your word. In your word heals us. In your word delivers us from destruction. I thank you so much because the words that we have shared today are truth. And a lot of us are being delivered right now. You said in Isaiah that so shall it be, 55, 11, that the words that you send, they shall come here on earth like rain. And they'll not come back to you until they've actualized that which you purpose them to do. So I thank you so much because the words that we've shared today are mending people's hearts. The words that you've given us today are fixing relationships. The words that you've given us today are fixing families. I thank you so much because there's healing and deliverance right now in people's hearts. I thank you so much because people are hearing and perceiving and hear and, and they're seeing and perceiving and hearing and understanding and their hearts are turning to you. I thank you because people's hearts are turning from wherever they've been held bondage into you. Thank you so much for getting us from Mount Sinai and to Mount Jerusalem. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.